Hi, uh, my name is Pradeep and I'll be the speaker for the today's session on Barracuda Application Delivery Controller. From the previous sessions that we have had earlier, you might have learned about the Barracuda Load Balancer and the Barracuda Web Application Firewall. The Barracuda Application Delivery Controller could be considered as a, as a mix of the good technologies in both the load balancer as well as in the web application firewall. Otherwise, it could be thought of as a bridge between the two other products. So today's agenda would be to understand what is the ADC, the application delivery controller, and definitely who is going to buy it. So from a pre-sales angle, this is a very important question for us to understand who our target customers are, how do we position an application delivery controller? All right, so let's try and answer the first question, what is it? Otherwise, the Barracuda ADC story. Now, from the very definition of Barracuda ADC, which is the application delivery controller, we understand that it has something got to do with the application. Otherwise, it has got a lot to do with the application. Now, Barracuda says the solutions must focus on the applications. There shouldn't be anything such as a downtime. The applications must always be there. The user experience of the websites, of the solutions what the customer, the vendor has to offer, is very critical to the success of the business. In other words, the applications must be fast should be scalable to meet the growth requirements. And most of the time it is the application that drives the user experience. You must have seen once you log into a google.com or to the favorite news site, if it is going to take at least a minute or two to load, you must start scratching your head saying, why wow, it's very slow. Now that itself tells you, that gives you a very bad impression, that gives you a very bad experience of the website. And it is highly unlikely, or highly likely, that you might go to that website again. You'll say, all right, let me try a different new site. It's much more faster. All right, so it's the application control. It's basically the applications that controls the, uh, the user experience. And with recent days of all the security threats that the uh, organizations of all kinds and nature face, yes, the security is a must. So now, having said all these things, you might have noticed the first three points was mostly to do with the application delivery aspect. And the last one which I said is about security. Now here is what the difference is from the load balancer. You have the security along with the application delivery controller. Whereas from the web application firewall, where you have security, which is the most of the core of the web application firewall, you don't have the other aspects of the load balancer, which we will try and see more in the coming slides. As Mr. Aditya Mata told in the beginning, we will have a couple of questions after the session, so, and uh, the fellow who answers uh, uh, almost all of it uh, would be given a prize. I'm not sure what the prize is, but let's hope it is something beautiful. All right, moving on. Now this is how the Barracuda application delivery controller platform looks like from a very high level block diagram. We have the security which is the bed on which the application, the availability of it, the acceleration of the application and the control of the application is based. We'll try and see what each of these components are. All right, starting on with the availability, the first one. We'll try and understand more of it. All right, now you see high availability within the data center. And what it can do, it can provide us, or it provides us, layer 4 to layer 7 load balancing. It provides us with the application monitors, helps of the failover groups, helps provide session persistence. Now you can see that we can have a couple of groups on the right hand side, it could be Exchange Castle, for example. Yeah, you can load balance exchange uh, system with the Barracuda load balancer or the ADC, or it could be Oracle Server, group one, group two. 
Now, assume you want to do a site-to-site -site high availability. What we just saw was within the data center. Now, let's say you have two sites, one in geographic location A and the other in the geographic location B. So, how do we do about a site-to-site -site high availability? All right. Now, what we call here is Global Server Load Balancing, the GSLB, and is done by priority. So, we have two sites, two geographically different sites. One is in the Michigan, which is the primary data center, and second one is in the Oregon, which is the secondary. Now, we on the left, we have a couple of users. There is one from the Boston, another from the San Francisco, and there's a lady from Denver. Now, let's try and understand what happens to these users' access. Where are they taken to the primary or are they taken to secondary and on what grounds? Let's assume the primary Michigan is down. So what happens? All the users get redirected to the secondary data center, which is in the Oregon. And this is all automated. Now, let's see there are a couple of more users, the same users spread across, but now, and they're trying to access. So, Michigan, the primary is up and it is back. The Oregon secondary is also up. Now, if a user from Boston or from Denver tries an access, so he gets, or as well as she gets, moved to the Michigan primary one because that is closer to them. We otherwise, Boston and Denver is close to Michigan. So these users, they, they are driven to the closest geographical location data center they have. Whereas the user in San Francisco is moved to the Oregon, which is the closest one to it. So we can do load balancing based on the geography. Now assume what happens when the secondary is down. Yeah, he goes back to the prime data center, as it should be. And region-wise, Michigan is in the east, Oregon in the west. So if you have region-wise distribution of it, you can do that also. That's what is shown here. Yeah, so once the west one is down, it goes to the east. So what we're trying to do understand here is we can do global server load balancing based on the location, based on the region, or just based on it is in high availability mode, which is, or Michigan is the primary one and Oregon is the secondary one. Having understood the availability aspect of it, let's try and understand some of the concepts behind the acceleration features provided. All right, the, the major features provided here on the acceleration are HTTP compression and the HTTP caching. On the data center, on the application controllers, you also have SSL offloading and link bonding within the system. Now, within the servers, you can also do TCP pooling and connection multi multiplexing. So these are very much the features that we have from the load balancer. So nothing new here. It's all the same features that we have in the load balancer. So as I told you earlier, the application delivery controller is a mix of load balancer and the web application firewall. All right, now coming to the acceleration aspects of it. So HTTP compression is very important if you have mobile-based devices access. So let's say your SAP ERP system is available on the internet and the people have a client deployed on an Android or on an iPhone, which is running on 3G. Being 3G network, which is where the data is so precious, you cannot have a lot of data being downloaded. It easily eats away the bandwidth. So once you enable the HTTP compression on the load balancer, all the data that transfers between the mobile client and the SSL, or the, sorry, the, uh, the ADC, they get compressed. So in effect, let's assume there's a web page of 1 MB in size. The Barracuda ADC, as those pages passes through it, compresses it using the regular GCP library. And once the user is there with the browser on the application, which could be a Firefox browser on Android or it could be the, the 
um, the Chrome browsers on the Android or whatever browser they use, it decrypts those web pages and effectively one MB file would be transferred as a 500 KB or 600 KB, whereby you release almost like 40 to 50 percent of the traffic required. So that itself accelerates the whole process. Also have HTTP caching, very important if you have static pages or images that are hardly updated. So rather than the user requesting every now and then a new web page or new image, the application delivery controller itself can serve those web pages directly to the user without consulting the server, which helps in a lot of connections. The other one could be the TCP polling where the data center, oh, sorry, the server in the data center and the application delivery controller uses their established TCP connection to cater to the other connections as well. So they maintain a couple of TCP connections and use that connection for all those requests. So there is a caveat here, which you always have to keep in mind. Some servers and some applications do not allow TCP pooling. So you have to be careful uh, when you try to enable this feature. All right, moving on to the control. All right, now well, let's see what we have for control. Okay, so what we can do on the control aspect. On the Barracuda ADC, we can do content routing. We also can do URL rewrite. We can do rate control. We support IPv6 and IPv4. So if there is a site which is HTTP colon slash slash www.website.com, this request coming in, and if it is on the main site, using URL rewrite, you can rewrite to HTTP colon slash slash www.mysite.com slash main. So it goes to the main site. Assume if the request is coming from a mobile device, we can redirect it to the mobile site. So now what you have to understand here is, in both the cases, the regular users as well as the mobile users, they are always requested from one site, which is www.site.com. Based on the intelligence in the application delivery controller, he understands whether the request is coming from a mobile device or is it from a regular browser or the regular laptop or a desktop. So based on it, this intelligence, the rewrite of the URL happens. Now let's try and see what the man with the black hat does. All right, he's an attacker. He's trying to do a DDoS. And what does a control do? He throttles or get blocked. So these are the major features that we just saw. Content routing, URL rewrite or rate control. And finally, the bed on which the whole of the application is built, which is the security. So what do we have here? We have layer seven security controls, which understands the application. The hacker, the bad guy, the man with the cap on the left-hand side of us, trying to access, trying to do something bad. He gets blocked, dropped, by the inbound inspection engine running on the application delivery controller. All right, now the attack is coming from outside, it is getting dropped. Now what about the attacks which happens from the inside to the outside? A good example would be data leakage. So whereby enabling outbound protection, we get ourselves protected against data leakage. This might include Passwords which is going out, credit card numbers which is going out, stuff like that. There are a couple of other things also which we can protect us against. Clocking application error codes. You might have seen the IIS or the Apache throwing certain errors, page fault, memory heap, memory dump, all the stuff onto the web page. So to a normal user, that is just a junk web page. Normally what do you do? You just close it. You just close those application or that web page and try and open a new one. But for the man with the hat 
that's a lot of information. It tells him a lot of things, like what kind of web server is it? What version is it? What are the vulnerabilities running on it? What's the file structure of it? So there's a hell of a lot of information available for the hacker, and it's a treasure for him. He could base the nest attacks just based on those information, which is seemingly not very important for a normal user. So that's what we can do. So we can do both, which is the inbound inspection against the laser attacks, and we can do the outbound inspection. So we basically do almost all of it. Now, let's try and understand a summary. Attack protection, what do we do? We protect the applications from the OWASP top 10 attacks. SQL injection, a very old one, but a very powerful and still relevant. Still lots of attacks happening with SQL injection. We protect you from SQL injection. CSS, the cross-site scripting. RDCS, RF, the cross-site request forgery. HTTP parameter cloaking, pollution, website cloaking. We protect you against all these attacks. We also have the antivirus built in to the system, which can again scan the traffic for non-threats. Session protection. Now what can we do to help you with session protection? We can help you with the cookie encryption. We can help you with parameter tampering. We can also help you with cookie signing, for example. So this tells you whether the session has been hacked into or was any modification done on the way. Whether any parameter has been tampered with, values changed, we'll be able to know. So based on this knowledge, armed with this knowledge, you can take a well-informed decision. Whether you want to allow the traffic to come in or you just want to drop it. Denial of service protection, DOS, very relevant these days. You might have heard a lot in the news. How we help you here? We help you with the brute force protection. We help you control access by geographical IP address. Let's assume you have business interest in Africa, in the Americas, in the Middle East. Fair enough, there's a good company. Now, knowing this, you don't want a user of yours, let's say coming from China, for example. You don't have any business interest there. None of your clients are from China, so why would you receive a request from China? All right, if you see such a request, you might be worried. So how can we help you alleviate those worry? We can help you create a filter, or just a tick box saying, any requests from those geographies, which I don't want to do business with, or which I don't do business with, Lock it. It's as easy as that. Layer 7, denial of service attacks, which happens on the application layer. We can do help with those. With the data theft protection, credit card numbers, social security numbers, customer patterns, these are the built-in ones, which is the credit card number and the social security. Customer patterns is something which can be defined by yourself using regular expressions. We do integrate with the SIEM index services. The most common ones, the Arcsight, Barracuda by itself converts all its logs to the common event format, whereby there's a direct integration with the Arcsight. It also works, it has a syslog system, so you can just send your logs to any of those SIM systems out there. All right. Now, having said about the security, let's try and see how security gets updated. All right. We have something which is called the Barracuda Labs and the Barracuda Central, wherein they do all the research about the web contents, about where the threats are emerging, running honeypots, figuring out what kind of traffic are there in those networks. And all this information gathered and signatures developed, and then they are pushed to all of the Barracuda security devices. 
Now, having said about the devices, how they look like, what are security features, how they protect you, how we help you accelerate, we'll try and see what products are certified to be load balanced or by Barracuda and how a typical deployment would look like. Now, the certificate ones are, or the certified product ranges are for the Microsoft Exchange, for the SharePoint, the link for the OCS terminal services, for Oracle, almost the most common web servers, virtual servers, VMware, Zen server, I pay almost everybody there. Definitely the Barracuda machines as well. So we have these products are certified to run on or run along with Barracuda. And you have the deployment guides, which is downloadable ones, which tells you step by step what you need to do. Good question. Who is going to buy it? Everybody who needs it will buy it. Let's understand a typical customer use case. So it could be that the user is, uh, the customer is looking for a load balancer, but not just a load balancer, you know, something which has a better reporting and logging with higher end models, multi gig throughput, multi port configuration, which has a 10 gig NIC optional connectivity if you want it, and with security functionality also. So you, you have everything in one box. Now, if you find such a customer, Barracuda Application Delivery Controller is the product for him. That is your customer. So, as I said, it's an all-in-one deployment platform. So, almost all of these functions are getting moved into the single box. What do we have here? We have a basic firewalling functionality, which is based on the packet filtering. Or the reverse proxy, SSL offloading load balancing, caching, compression, web firewalling. It's it's very it's very easy to do. So what you're speaking here is of multiple multiple boxes. Firewall box is a reverse proxy box, one for SSL offloading, there's a load balancer, this one's for it to give you compression, there's on another web application firewall. So basically you can move all these different boxes and replace them with one box. Now, now this is very important for us to understand. The Microsoft Threat Management Gateway, TMG, is end of life. So what does it mean? It means the TMG was most of the time deployed in front of MS Exchange. And Exchange is, is the email server used in the region. So Threat Management Gateway is out. So there has to be something to replace it. Yes, we can do it. We can replace TMG with the application delivery controller. So that is your client. Any of your client who has a threat management gateway, who has deployed MS Exchange, is your client. Just look out for those companies. Those are your clients. And they look out for the other load balancer, like Cisco Ace, for example, end of life. So anybody who wants to get their load balance replaced, yeah, we have an opportunity there. All right, how to position the Barracuda product lines. Now we have two products here, which I have been referring on and off. The first one, of course, which is of the uh, which is the core of today's session, which is the uh, application delivery controller, and the other one is the web application firewall. Now you can sell the ADC to any customers who are looking for a load balancing, customers looking for application delivery or the advanced application delivery. You can sell the WAF to anybody who is looking for a standalone WAF. And somebody was looking for the best in class security device, yeah, for the WAF. So let's see the key triggers here. Barracuda ADC on the left versus the Barracuda WAF on the right. 
ADC offers you what else? It offers you GSLB, it offers you DSI, performance and security greater than 3 gig throughput, high port density. It can be a load balancer for your MS Exchange. So who are competitors here on the ADC? F5, A10, Citrix, Camp. So let's try and see what Barracuda WAF offers you. Now, it doesn't offer you all those great things what ADC offers you, but it has to, it has got to offer you some other great things, like the standalone HTTP, HTTPS, or XML security, positive profiling, negative profiling, or a combination of both of it, or using a WAFAG RFP, or in places where a security of prime importance and you require a, a FIPS 140-2 certified products. WAF is the answer for those. ADC cannot help you there. Whom do we have here as a competitor? F5? I um, guess F5 is not here, but I guess F5 is a competitor for us in the spectrum as well. Yeah, the other one is Imperva, for example. All right. So that pretty much ends our today's session. The next slide is, is not for you guys, but I just have it on my uh, slide. All right, uh, thank you for uh, watching the video on uh, Barracuda Application Delivery Controller. Stay in for, uh, uh, for more updates to come. Thank you.